Frank is America's top insurance attorney, and today we're going to talk about disability insurance. Frank, we're going to use Tiger Woods as an example of why you need disability insurance. For somebody that has worked so very, very hard to keep his core and his body and his back, you just look at a sport that's not contact, and he's got four knee surgeries, he's got back problems, he's got elbow problems, he's got confidence problems, and, you know, it highlights that none of us are indestructible, and here's somebody that 24-7 is working to make sure that his body runs like a Rolls-Royce engine, and it's not working. And if you if you think about it, you know, the rest of us who, you know, love the game or we get out and we play, you know, once a month or twice a month or, you know, guys who actually get out there every week, I mean, if Tiger Woods is spending 24-7, seven days a week trying to keep his body in shape, think about what the rest of us risk in terms of muscles, ligaments, tendons, overuse, uh, traumatic injuries, and that repetitive motion that all of us feel. And, you know, how many of us have, have gone out there and, and taken a, a, a Motrin or, or a couple Advils to try and get through a round? And we all overswing. We all try and hit the ball too far. But some of us don't have the ability to, to stay as fit as him or as flexible as him. And, you know, in my practice, I see golfers. Uh, I see them with back problems. I see them with disc surgeries. I see them with elbow problems. You know, uh, Justin Rose, uh, last year's U.S. Open uh, champion, you know, he said, hey, I'm 34, and there are a lot of miles on my vehicle. I've been playing golf every day since I was five years old. So, you know, it's it, and it's not just guys. Uh, it, it's women, uh, too. You know, Jason Day, the winner of the Women's Golf Classic event of the year, you know, the, the, the problems there are, 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 are not just male related. Accidents happen and they happen often. Just last year, we had 55,000 emergency room visits because of golf accidents. And it translates. You know, we, we all think we can go out there and, and, you know, play softball or play baseball or, you know, we pick up a bowling ball and we're going out there to, to, to roll a, a couple of games of, of bowling with our kids and bang, uh, we got a problem. What I do think is interesting getting back to Tiger, it was a time for about seven or eight years that, that he was a menace on the golf course, not only in terms of his ability, but psychologically, if you had to play a match in which you were paired with Tiger Woods, Man, you were quaking in your shoes. Not today. Tiger Woods, that old man, well, he's had his day. And and it brings up this whole point of disability insurance. And, 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 you know, the athletes we all see and we see the big salaries, and obviously Tiger's got tremendous endorsements. But, you know, you step down, you step into the, you know, uh, take, take out the, the top 15 this year, you know, the rest of those guys are are moving from tournament to tournament. They're they're in a mobile uh, trailer. They're in a hotel. They're traveling. They're doing all the rest. You know, minor league players. You know, we can look at all the guys every year that we get to shuffle in in the minor league. Fifteen hundred players that you know get sick or they get injured or they got a career ending injury. You know, a lot of those people. It's shocking, Gary. It's just shocking. And if you start at the top and you look at a professional athlete, football players three-and-a-half-year uh, career average, you know, I, I can tell you, 90% of those guys don't have disability insurance. They're relying on workers' comp insurance from the team, which, you know, it isn't going to replace your earnings. It's not going to get you a different job. The best it's going to do is get you to a place where you're no better and no worse, and you're going to get about 35% of what you were earning and not if you're a professional. And, and you know, the thing about workers' compensation is, you know, it's not like you're going to get retraining anymore. The retraining for workers' compensation across the country now is limited to $1,500. So if you can't do the work that you were trained for, you have an injury or a sickness, and you're expecting that the workers' comp is going to retrain you, it's not happening. You get $1,500.